Welcome to Alchemist Camp. This is where we learn elixir by building things. And today is just the answer to yesterday's challenge. As you may recall, we've got a stat watch module and it records stats for various profiles. Uh, it gets the Alexa rank of their website based on their URL and the number of Twitter followers they have and a few stats about YouTube. So we made a schema for it before everything had just been hard coded in the app and or CSV files. And now we've got profiles in the database. And the challenge was to add the stats to the database as well and make an association. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we just created a migration for stats and the stats are YouTube subs, videos, views, Twitter followers, Alexa rank, and all of those are integers. And then there's a profile ID, which references the profile table in the database. Uh, if the profile is deleted, the stats are kept, which is what this on delete nothing does. And then instead of keeping track of the time, which we were doing, we were just manually noting the time uh, and putting it into the CSVs, we'll use this timestamps. Now timestamps by default use native time, and I wanna use UTC time. We can use a module attribute to configure UTC time like so, but I've chosen not to do that because I wanna configure that globally. So instead of putting this in our migration, I've put it into the config.exs file. And if you look here in the config statwatch, statwatch.repo, got migration timestamps type UTC date time. And if you forget this, of course you can check it in the docs. It's in Ecto migration docs and it explains about using the migration timestamps. So uh, in general, I always prefer to have everything in UTC because date time problems are some of the worst things in the world anywhere. Um, but you know, teach your own. Default is native. So we'll save this and fire up IEX. And don't forget, you need to run Ecto Migrate if you haven't done it yet. All right, with this loaded up, I'm gonna go back to the, the stat schema just for a reference. And I've already got one stat inside the database. Uh, let me do some aliases first just for convenience and then I'll, I'll get into it. So alias statwatch dot profile and statwatch.stat. Those are our two schemas. And then we also need the Ecto repo. Okay, so now we can do repo dot all of stat. And we'll see all one of our stats. We can make another one pretty easily, uh, stat. And I'm just gonna use an object that I put together before the video and this approximately accurate data. So stat, it's gonna be a stat struct and uh, shoot, that is not quite what I wanted. Okay, stat equals this bear object and we'll make a struct from that. So kernel.struct for stat and stat object that we just made. Okay, so here is an object, ID is nil, uh, and that's that's just because we haven't uh, uh, haven't actually put it in the database yet. And the profile ID is two, which is uh, which is me. So I'm gonna say alchemist or al equals repo dot get of profile and the second one. And the stat says profile ecto association not loaded. That's because unlike active record or some other ORMs, uh, ecto doesn't preemptively load all the associations. That means a little bit more hassle up front, but you don't end up with really weird performance problems when you think you're making you know, seven or eight calls to the database, but you're actually making like 40. You'll never end up loading things without explicitly deciding to. So with this stat, we're just gonna take this object and throw it into the repo. Hey, 
hang on here. Did it save it? Did not save it. That's fine. Okay, so we put the stat struct with the stats data into the repo, and if we do repo.all, and there are two data points now. All right, so that is all well and good. Now the next thing is how do we see the profile? How do we how do we preload it? Well, you use something called preload, and that's just repo dot preload. And our item is not named. Okay, hang on here. So we're going to get a new stat. So our, our stat will get the item from the actual repo. And this should be ID number two, because it's the second one that was created. Okay, so there we go. Now we have a stat that also has all of the data from the profile loaded. So this ID two name alchemist Twitter alchemist camp that's from the profile, and the rest, which is not indented, is actually part of the stat. Next question is how would we go about getting all of the stats for a given profile? Because that seems like a really useful thing as well. Um, there's nothing in the database entries for the profiles related to the stats and ecto doesn't know anything about them either so right now if we look at this profile there simply is nothing here related to stat uh, even though we said that stats belong to the profiles so what we have to do is update our profile schema and in the profile schema we will add a has many stat watch dot stat so as before, the stats is the column in the database, or I should say it's the table in the database, and statwatch.stat is the Ecto schema. So once we've made this association of the Ecto schema, uh, even though there's nothing in the database related to it, we can recognize it from Ecto. So I'm gonna have to recompile here. And also repull uh, the alchemist profile. So now equals repo dot get profile ID two. And now there's a stats column in the profile. And as before, it's not loaded. So we'd have to load it. And pass the atom for stats. And now we have both of the stats uh, preloaded and however many we had would all be preloaded. There are other options you can pass in if you want to limit that. So uh, once again, check out the docs there. They are your friend. Uh, now we've basically got, you know, the association set up from both sides and we can work with it. So challenge accomplished. Next video, we'll actually make these changes to the StatWatch module and uh, make it so that it no longer needs to use CSVs at all. Although I think still having an option for importing them and creating them would be nice. That's it for today. I hope you found the video useful. See you next time.